What's the bureau of penguins? Today we do 2023 number four on photosynthesis and photosynthesis. So non-cyclic electron flow and cyclic electron flow are two major pathways with light-dependent reactions of photosynthesis. In non-cyclic electron flow, electrons pass through photosystem two, then components of the electron transport chain, then photosystem one, before finally reducing NADP plus to NADPH. As a reminder, reducing has to do with a gaining of electrons. So the electrons are going to NADP plus to become NADPH. In the cycle electron flow, the electrons cycle from photosystem one, and then some components of the electron transport chain, and they keep kind of cycling through. Okay, so you see them come up, down, and then back over again. Um, and this is going to allow them to synthesize ACP without synthesizing NADPH. So the first thing I have to do is you have to describe the role of photosystems and photosystems of plant cells. Well, chlorophyll is the pigment that's within the thylakoid membrane of our um, plant cell and the chloroplasts. Um, and so that's what's in the photosystem that is going to absorb the light energy. So chlorophyll captures, absorbs light energy. You could also talk about how the chlorophyll is the one that's receiving electrons from the water. So in photosystem two, we go through photolysis and the water molecule is broken, releasing the electrons so we can oxidize water. Um, and those electrons go back to photosystem two to kind of replenish the ones that get lost. Um, it receives electrons for electron transport chain. So talking about photosystem one, how those electrons that um, go down the electron transport chain, they're uh, received by that photosystem. Or talking about the photosystem two, um, transferring electrons to the electron transport chain. So those are different options. The student said chlorophyll is a pigment in the photosystems of plant cells that absorbs light, which is the source of energy that excites the photosystem's electrons and allows them to move to electron acceptors that carry the energy to other molecules. So B, based on the figure, we have to explain why an increase in the ratio of NADPH to NADP plus will cause an increase in the flow of electrons through cyclic electron flow. Well, here we're looking at that we have a lot of NADPH and not a lot of NADP plus. Well, if there's nothing to like take those electrons, there's nothing that's going to get reduced, then we're going to have to keep kind of cycling through to be able to continue generating the ATP um, because we're going to keep seeing light shining down here and we're going to keep seeing that electron kind of jumping up. So we have to have something to take those electrons. And so since there isn't any NADP plus to accept the electrons, we're going to have to keep kind of cycling and cycling. Well, so the answer that we're looking for is there's less NADP plus or there's no NADP plus to accept the electrons. So electrons pass instead to the cyclic pathway or from ferrodoxin to the cytochrome complex. Student says, an increase in the ratio of NADPH to NADP plus would increase cyclic electron flow because non-cyclic electron flow creates more NADP plus H. If the concentration is already high, it would inhibit non-cyclic electron flow because there is not enough NADP plus to accept the electrons. So electrons will be transferred back to electron transport chain and photosystem one. So C and D kind of go together because you're predicting in one and justifying the other. So I just went ahead and put them together. Using race plants. Scientists examine the effect of a mutation that results in the loss of protein CRR6. CRR6 is a part of the photosystem 1 complex, so right here. Um, and its absence reduces the activity of photosystem 1. Predict the effect of mutation on the rate of biomass dry mate accumulation. And then D is asking you to justify that prediction. So anytime they ask you to predict something, you should not leave it blank. The options you're probably going to have here, we're going to increase biomass. We're going to decrease biomass or biomass would stay the same. So since we're seeing a reduction in the activity, okay, and the whole point of this process is to synthesize the um, ATP as well as the NADPH, if we have less activity of those than one, we're not going to be able to make the ATP. We're not going to be able to make NADPH. And so we're going to see a reduction in biomass because we do not have the materials, the energy, and the electrons needed in order to synthesize those carbohydrates. Um, uh, was it G3P that we would make in the Calvin cycle? So option that we're looking for here, rate of biomass accumulation will be lower um, in comparison to a plant with alpha mutation. Um, there would be insufficient ATP and ADPH produced for synthesis of carbohydrates or the Calvin cycle. Um, so mutation of CRR6 would decrease the rate of biomass accumulation. This is because less NADP plus will be reduced. This is needed for the carbon fixation in the Calvin cycle that creates the sugars from CO2 that contribute to the biomass of the plants. So I hope that was helpful. Remember, AP Bio Penguins are just success. Bye.